All right, so we've got our lowers mm -hmm. in and our counter and some appliances. And uh, I decided to just go with a gray counter. And I realized I forgot to put my pulls on there. But we can go back and add those to our handles. I use the same kind of knob. And there we go. And I can go around each one of these and put the knobs on the on the handles. Um, I put them on the doors and I forgot to do the, the drawers. So we're going to do some upper cabinets now. I'll switch back to top plan and I'll pull back up the architect sampler. And there's a wall cabinet and then this utility cabinet. The wall cabinet draws a cabinet without a kick and you have a couple of more options for the doors. Now you could put a wall cabinet on the ground if you wanted some of those options, change the depth and draw your own kick. So you can use um, these cabinets wherever you want. Don't, don't feel like you're constrained. Or if you want to make this a full height pantry or make one of the base cabinets a full height pantry, all you have to do is change the height and change the depth. So I've got a, a cabinet here that's 24 long. So I'll put a, an upper cabinet that's 24 long as well. So I'll just drop it on my on my page and I'll make it 24. I have my blind finish options as well. You can have blind corner cabinets for upper cabinets. Uh, if you have an end to a cabinet, if it's going to show, you can give it an end finish. Otherwise, oftentimes, at least in the top plan when you, when you show the detail, it doesn't show up. But Having a peninsula finish will mean that you have a finished side on one side or the other. Notice you can change corner square front, corner diagonal front, just like the lowers. I'll go back to wall hung. And I'll switch to a an isometric view just so we can see what we're see what we're doing. So the door mounting, I'll have those be flush too as well. And the door style, I'll choose square. If I wanted it to be open, I could choose it to be open or square, multi-panel with an arch. I'll keep it with square. The panel style, unlike the lowers, I have recessed rays and groove, but I can also choose glass. So I'm going to choose that. And then mullion style, you, you can't spec them out quite as much like on doors, but you can choose colonial, which are six divided lights, or fractional, which are more arts and crafts, prairie, I'm not quite sure what prairie is. Eh. And then vista, I think, is just uh, a couple of ones. So you can play around a little bit. I'll go back to colonial. Number of shelves, I can put in two. Handle height, four inches is fine. Rail and style width, I'll keep it two. And then we've got the reveals again. So I can keep my top and bottom reveals. Um, I can do my center reveal or my side reveal if I want that a little bit bigger. If I want to have a center style, I can make that a little bigger. And then glazing. Clear. And then cabinets. So I can assign the cases and the doors to classes. So I could create new cases if I wanted them different from the lowers. But in this case, I'll keep the, the textures the same as my lowers. And handles, I'll use the same handles. The only real difference here is that my doors have mullions and that there's clear glass in there. And if I show detail, it'll show the complete cabinet. If I decide not to show detail, I just get this dashed line. I'll choose to show detail. And 
I'll actually grab it by its back corner so I can snap it into place. And there we go. The routine here is the same for the for the lowers. I, I've done all my changes. I'm just going to drag a copy and then I'm clicking on the cabinet below it if I want to have them line up. Typically if your uppers align with your lowers if you can. Uh, so I'm seeing my lower length is 20 so I'll make the upper length 20 to match. And at 20 you're kind of you have to decide if you want to have one door or two doors, especially with frame and panel. One, two doors get a little skinny. Let's see what it looks like with one door. You can decide, and you, obviously you can decide if you want to have it be left-handed or right-handed swinging. These are design considerations. I'm going to move this down a little bit and then look at it from this view. If I want to put a cabinet up above here, I can do that. I need to know what that measurement is, so I'll dimension that. So 11 and 3 eighths. And so what I can do is copy one of my existing ones. I don't need to go through all that formatting again and pull it over. And I know my range hood is 30 inches, so I can change that to 30 inches. And I can move that into position. And I can change its height to 11 and 3 eighths. I can make it a little deeper if I want, though usually 12 inches deep is fine, but I can make that deeper if I wanted. And then the last thing I need to do is put it at the correct elevation. So it needs to sit on top of my cabinet, or more importantly, I want it flush with the top of the other cabinets. There we go. And then I'm going to zoom around so I can see it. And boy, I don't like those doors at all. So I'm going to go back to two doors, see if that improves matters. And I've got some itty bitty lights there and maybe what I'll do is I'll choose none for those doors and maybe I'll draw something in or something but I can turn those off and on uh, but I realized I didn't drag a copy I actually dragged the actual one so I have to go back and make another copy I'm going to copy this one since it's the correct height and at the correct elevation and I've already forgotten how big this cabinet is. 20. Make that 20 again. And move it into place. And I'll go back to one door. And I'll have it open on the left. And so on. If I want to put a cabinet up above the fridge and have it be a little deeper, that's fine. I can make a copy and I'll rotate it around and I'll make it however wide this is. I'll pull that dimension. 33 and a half. So this becomes. 33 and a half. And I want to make it a little deeper. It's currently 12. Let's make this 21. It's a little easier to reach. And then I have to figure out the height. And mostly I want to have it lined up so my height is correct there. So I'm just going to measure to see how much room I have up above my fridge. Fourteen and a quarter. So I'm going to make this 12 so I have a, a little bit of room in between my 
hinge. And then I can lift it up or I can change the altitude from the floor, one or the other. I can move it up. And if I grab it here, yeah, I can line it up. I'm good. I have the right height. Oops. And I don't need a peninsula. I've got none, so it's only on one side. And there we go. And then if I don't like those doors as well, maybe I'll take the uh, the lights out of there. And so on. So I could continue around if I wanted some upper cabinets here, but it's the uh, the same same basic idea. So you have a lot of a lot of options with these. Boy, man, blew it on <laughs> creating a copy. I think I'm hitting the option key, but I'm impatient. I'm not waiting for the little plus side, so let me at least get this one here. And this has two doors. Alright, so our floor plan very quickly is, is filling in with some pretty nice looking cabinets.